Welcome to the Seasides. I'm the Reverend Canon Tracy Charnock, vicar of two parishes here in the South Shore part of Blackpool, St Peter's and Holy Trinity. The famous promenade here in Blackpool welcomes thousands of visitors every year. Blackpool is a town synonymous with fun and liveliness. Yet it's also a town with much deprivation and suffering. Our two parishes here in South Shore offer a safe space and holy ground where all are welcomed, all are loved, all are valued. You're most welcome to join us today for the Church of England's online service. With God, nothing will be impossible. For he is our God. And the God of salvation is making all things new. Amen. Light of the world, you stepped down into darkness. Opened my eyes, let me see. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to our Eucharist today, and a special welcome to those joining us online for the Church of England National Service. As we prepare to meet our Lord and in word and sacrament, let us say together our opening prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
May the God of all love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Collect for today, let us pray. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions. Make them to ask such things as shall please you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Realising that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, Forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, alleluia. God is love. Let us love one another as God has loved us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And he seized him by the throat and said, Pay what you owe. But then his fellow slave, slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. As a child, whenever I heard the response that Jesus makes to Peter, as we heard just then, not seven times I tell you, but 77 times, or as some interpretations put it, 70 times seven. As a child, rather than listening to the rest of the passage, I would drift off trying to calculate in my head 70 multiplied by seven. Forgiveness called for by God is beyond all calculation. Jesus is telling Peter, stop counting you must always forgive, because that is the way of God's kingdom. Jesus then tells a parable comparing what the kingdom of heaven is like. This is a kingdom which turns the values and expectations of this world upside down. Entry into this kingdom is available to all through grace, through God's good grace, by compassion, and by abundant generosity from our God. So this parable is about a generous king out of love for his servant, his neighbor, and knowing the value of forgiveness, he cancels out a huge debt that the servant owes to him, an act of remarkable generosity. But this same servant then goes out and shows absolutely no compassion to his fellow servant. He gets him thrown in prison because of the debt he owes him, which actually is only a fraction of what this servant had owed to the king. And then fellow members of the community witness this injustice, and they don't stand by, they call it out. And then we have the conclusion. We hear this wicked servant then gets his just punishment not because he is owed money, but because he didn't forgive. I'm sure we've all 
found forgiveness hard at times. It is a hard road to travel, but it is a way of life, a way of life in abundance, following in the way of Christ. Forgiveness is the way of Jesus, the way of the cross, the way of life in the kingdom of God. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray daily, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. What does Christian forgiveness look like? This forgiveness, this way of life means letting love overcome the pain and the hurt. The practice of forgiveness by Christians is evidence of the reality of Christ's love for the world. For in Jesus Christ, God took the troubled world and the sin upon himself, showing us the ultimate sacrifice for sin in that divine image of the Son of God on the cross. And that cross was not the end. That cross is life-giving, for it frees us, it liberates us, it offers us life in abundance. For all of us on our life's journey, there are and will be times when we go wrong, when maybe even unintentionally we hurt those around us. And equally, there will be those times when others hurt us. You may be struggling with some issue of friendship today. And we look around us and see in our world immense hurt and evil. And we seek after justice. And then closer to home, we experience, we experience injustices and kindness in our neighbourhoods and in our communities, in our local towns, villages, or cities. Blackpool is renowned for being a place of fun and liveliness. And yet, just a street or two back from the prom, there is that sense of deprivation, as many of our coastal towns have experienced, abject poverty, poverty where people are struggling at every turn in their lives. Finances stacked against them, trapped in a benefit system, there is rarely a Sunday goes by here at St. Peter's when we don't have somebody come through our doors in need of a hot drink, of food or of clothing. And most importantly, of acknowledgement, of conversation, of prayer, of an open welcome. Today's gospel speaks of God's kingdom coming, a kingdom where people are given a chance where debts are cancelled and those in need receive God's generous love in abundance. Forgiveness doesn't mean that justice isn't done. Forgiveness doesn't numb our minds and our hearts to the pain we feel, for that pain will often be very real. To forgive means to refuse to let wrongs destroy us, to refuse to let those wrongs separate us from God and from one another. To forgive is hard work, but it is the way of the disciple of Christ. Through the act of forgiving, forgiving from the heart, our souls find peace. Peace with God, peace with others, peace with self. Maybe today, you are in the position of the king in that parable with the power to bring about change for those who are struggling. Or maybe you are struggling to make ends meet or struggling in some kind of relationship difficulty in need of a bit of a break and compassion. Or maybe you are witness to the injustices going on around you which need to be called out. Many of us will be able to identify with the generous love, kindness and mercy of God when God has provided for us in our time of need, when we felt that compassion and love, when we felt God's kingdom come near. God loves each and every one of us unconditionally. God offers us forgiveness. God extends a loving embrace, and God 
welcomes us home. For in God's kingdom, all our values, all our welcomes, all are loved. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. God of compassion, into the unease and weariness of the world, bring reconciliation and peace. We pray for the worldwide Christian church, for our unity in word and sacrament, in prayer and praise, and in loving service to our neighbours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, guide all who lead and govern the nations of the world. We pray for all affected by the economic crisis, for nations torn apart by human violence or devastated by natural disasters, and for those fleeing their homelands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of tenderness, dwell in our hearts and our homes through all times of joy and sadness. We pray for our loved ones, families and friends. We rejoice with them in celebrating your gift of love to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wholeness, speak into the despair and loneliness of all who struggle with life and its troubles. We pray for those who face prejudice or discrimination, for all who are sick or in pain. We name aloud or in the silence of our hearts those known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, we remember before you those who have died, who are safe in your loving embrace. We give thanks for the memories we treasure deep in our hearts. Be with all who mourn the passing of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for God's peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The man upon a cross 
my sin upon his shoulders the shame I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished his dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished I will not boast in anything no gifts no power no I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my Let us pray. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, 
these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. 
God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together, we thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet, prepared for all peoples. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and all who you love here on earth and in heaven and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.